This is a quick movie just showing you how to do a uh, count inside Image Pro, a threshold based count. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is a monochrome image. Um, so to have a look at this, all of our counting options are held under measure and count size. And this little dialog here actually controls all of our threshold selection, all of our option selection, and all of our measurement viewing uh, selection and actual uh, looking at the data itself. So the first thing we should probably do is set up to detect our objects. So let's do this. We have three different options here. Manual, automatic bright, and automatic dark. Um, these methods look at a histogram, automatic dark and automatic bright, and they'll often actually just show us what it assumes is dark and bright. But we'll actually have a look at manual. So the minute we hit manual, you can see that select ranges comes up as an option. I should just drag this into view, and now we have a histogram, and it says, look, if I did a dark count, it was going to select all the pixels that have a value of between 0 and 102. And we can use the slider bar here to make a better or worse selection of our object. So I'm just going to do 1 to 100, maybe that makes sense. Okay. Now, what we're going to do now is just press close, because we've selected all the objects we're interested in. Let's look at how we display those options. So, selected my ranges, I'm going to come to options, and here are my options for counting. So, first time, outline style. Do I want to have a big block of red where I'm looking? Or do I want to have uh, uh, an outline? So let's just show you what an outline looks like. So you can see an outline looks quite nice because it allows us to see what's inside our object but we may want to have filled. Okay. It's a display option, people can choose it as they need to. Um, some people may just want to have a look at a dot, just to indicate everything that we've, we've counted as a single dot. Okay, that's the first option, label style. We can put a label on, so we could just say we want it to be an object, and you can see there we are. So here's my object, 28, 30, 32, and so on. Now that's useful when we've got about a hundred objects on an image. When we have more than that, we tend to get swamped by the number of objects that we have, so we're going to select none. Okay, and therefore label colour becomes not very useful to us, and we can change the colour. We may say we want it to be green, and it's not going to refresh until I close off it there, so there's green with green labels, so that's fine. And then we have uh, little objects like fill holes. If we've had a thresholding error inside our object, or maybe we're counting rings, but we want to take into account, so a lot of people who do bubble counts uh, will want to fill holes. That'll make that into a solid. And you see there's your little preview window there. Okay. Um, we also have the opportunity to pre-filter on area. So we're going to do some filters later on and look at getting rid of small objects and so on. And we can actually say, let's do that before we do a count. So the last option here is all about I'll just get up again. It's all about cleaning borders. And I shall just demonstrate this by cutting my object and putting a little region of interest on. And I'll just duplicate this. So let's look at this picture instead. So this picture here is a field of view. We can just say it's from a microscope for now. And if I just press count, you can see I'm touching, I'm counting all of the objects that are touching the edge. Now if I was looking at doing a count and I was doing multiple fields and I was trying to say how many objects there were that I was looking at, I would actually say, actually, count me everything that's maybe, say, on the southeast border. So ignore these two objects here. Or the southwest. Maybe southwest is a bit easier. So now when I press count, I don't count anything on this side. So my error, theoretically, is being created here. So I can replicate. Now I can take more fields, and I can do a count correctly. Because okay? these two are being filled in by these two over here. Okay. Alternatively, if I was doing a particle distribution or a size distribution, I would always measure no borders. Because I don't know how big this object is. So, for my work, I tend to always not worry about my borders. If I'm doing a proper particle count and trying to do a distribution on a slide, then I probably would look at doing all borders. Okay, so let's go back to my original image of spots.
bring up my count size again. And now we can say, okay, so it's all green, filled objects, holes filled in, no borders. So count. Okay, so now I've selected my objects, now I want to want to get some information from them. So I'm going to go to measure and select measurements. So let's have a look at the measurements I can select. So it defaults to area, but let's measure some other things as well. So I'm just going to measure the mean intensity. The minute I select it, it goes into the middle and also shows me the area, uh, the information about the measurement here. Mean diameter, uh, perimeter, lots of different ways of measuring perimeter. So we'll just put a couple of those in. And then roundness and size and length. N measure. Okay, so the minute I press measure, I can now go to every single object and double click on it. I just bring this in the screen, and that tells me this is object 100, uh, 1611, and it tells me all the information about that object. Okay, the other thing that I can do as well is I can actually look at view measurement data, and here is a table that shows me every single object I have and you can see I can just navigate my way through and all of this data is every measurement that I requested and this can all go simply out to Excel export data. Other things that people may want to do is they may want to look at uh, the total number of objects. So in here we can see that I've got 42 objects um, based on the number of objects I have, but maybe I won't count the big objects. So I'm going to be size discriminant. So I come to my select measurements and I come in here and you can see I'm only actually counting objects that have a size of 10 to 100,000 pixels or a million or whatever it is. So if I just say edit range, I now get a histogram distribution of the particles and I can actually say, okay, bring this left to right. If I measure only objects between 10 and 572 pixels, I press OK. Footer objects. I've now got a total count of 42, but only 39 objects were counted. Now it's actually more useful to use when you're looking at small individual objects that are actually falling into thinking that it's a cell. Normally some bits of noise. We look here, these little dots here in the background. These aren't actually the objects we're looking at. So we want to have them removed from our count. Now, when I go back to the measurement data, we can look at all the values here, and the area value of this object here is 224. If I've used a calibration in my work, then all of the values are calibrated, and therefore that's a true micron value, or foot value, or meter value, or whatever we need it to be. Okay, so that's the basic introduction in how to do a count size. Um, in the next movie, we'll look at how to do some editing, getting rid of objects that are touching each other, and some different displays. Okay, but thanks very much for watching, and if you need any more information, please contact your local Media Cybernetics Image Pro dealer. Thanks.